Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today, we're going to be talking about the evil gnome. Man, if I would have thought about it, I would have wore a pointy hat. Oh, well. We'll have enough pointy hats in this discussion. But we're going to be talking about evil gnome. So, evil gnome is a... It is. It masquerades itself as a gnome extension. Um, and we want to look at what it is, how do you get it, how do you get rid of it. And that's kind of what the thesis is going to be. So this uh, this was first identified by Intizer. Uh, I and I, my apologies if I did not pronounce that correctly. Uh, but uh, this is a cybersecurity company that looks at different varying things. Of course, I mean this is like a, a full white paper. Now this is about a week old at this point in time. Um, when did this come out? Oh yeah, this came out middle of last week. Uh, we're just addressing it now because I kind of like waiting when, when these types of vulnerabilities come out. I usually like waiting a, a little bit un until we know more data, um, know more information. And so there really have not been a lot of updates, but let's just kind of walk through this a little bit. Now at the forefront, I'm not a cybersecurity expert, so I'm not going to know all of the odds and ins and outs. Uh, I will make sure that this this article here is linked. I'm not sure it's in the in the uh, description or not right now, but I'll I'll see if I can get it there. So they basically start with a basic introduction, indicating that most of the Linux type of malware are more like cryptocurrency or things targeting servers because two percent of the desktop is Linux, but seventy percent of the servers are Linux. That's why servers are a more vulnerable target than uh, than are the desktops. But this one here, not only does it specifically target the Linux desktop, but it specifically targets the GNOME desktop environment, which means Ubuntu will be vulnerable, Pop! OS will be vulnerable, and a lot of your other defaults. You know, Debian runs a default of GNOME. I think uh, Fedora runs a default of GNOME. Now, in my personal opinion, this is one of the reasons I have always talked about why I don't like GNOME. It, they have pulled so much functionality out of it, you have to start putting in a bunch of extensions to get the functionality you need back into it. And we're talking about removing basic stuff. And for me, that is why I do not like GNOME. This happened because GNOME opened itself up to a vulnerability by having such a bare bones feature, you have to add a lot of third party stuff onto it in order to make it do what you want it to do. And anytime that happens, anytime plugins become your primary model, you begin to get a situation where it is a new attack vector. That's why I like Cinnamon, where I don't need to add anything to the shell. It just does what a shell is supposed to do. Okay, uh, Mate, XFCE, Plasma, these all do what the shells. Now, Plasma has the ability to install widgets, but they have a lot of defaults already. It'd really be some obscure thing that you're looking for that you'd have to go and hunt down some other external functionality to install. But with GNOME, you do have to install these extensions to get the type of functionality. And by the way, as an expert in WordPress, this is a major limitation on WordPress. When I'm building my custom WordPress sites, I do not use plugins except for uh, A, very reputable plugins, and B, only when I need to. I actually build functionality that you could get with other, fun with other plugins directly into my custom themes because I don't want to have this pile of extra stuff because who knows if some companies so for example in WordPress they're the um, the the old primary number one Google Analytics plugin was purchased by Monster Insights who is a data whore it is crazy what they do and it's like this is insanity and you love and you have to agree to give them all sorts of data so your data is going to Google and to them that happened just because some company bought your plugin and updated it. And this is the same thing happens. You install a GNOME extensions, somebody might take that over and start putting stuff in there you didn't realize. And while it was perfectly fine when you audited it, if you did not audit every single update as they heard, which is difficult in some things, I'm not sure GNOME extensions do, but a lot of things are now pushing automatic updates. In fact, I'm pretty sure GNOME will inform you of an update. Um, so they've opened themselves up to this type of vulnerability. 
So what happened is this appears to be connected to this Gamaradin group, which is a known Russia hacking group. Now, I'm not I'm not throwing out the, and I talked about this in some of my videos, like, ooh, the Russians bad, ooh, the Chinese bad. I don't do those. I don't play those games. But this is a legitimate company, or, or not a company, a legitimate hacking group from Russia who has been well known and active for at least five or six years. And what they did here is they identified that this virus likely came from this group because of the way it works, some of the comments, some of the code, the servers, the open ports. These are the marks. These are the fingerprints of individual groups. And so they've identified that it came from this group. Now, um, one of the reasons we know a lot about this, which is kind of good for us, is it does appear that this was uploaded accidentally to the web. And the reason we say that is there's a lot of things in there, a lot of notes, a lot of stuff that you would usually extract out of it before releasing a virus to the wild. So it basically has a lot of the comments, a lot of things. In fact, there's a keylogger built in that's not yet complete. So there's a non-functional vestigial keylogger into the system. Uh, all of these things indicate that this was probably uploaded by accident which is good for us because before it really gets out there into the wild, we can start examining for it. And since this is an open source community, we should be able to find it pretty quick. So the first chunk of this article is identifying the similarities between this virus and other things by the, the Gamardin group. And my apologies again if I'm not pronouncing that right. Indicating IP addresses, DNS records, um, open ports. Uh, so the SSH open port at 3436. These are all uh, these are all marks of that individual hacking group. Um, so what it does is when you download it, and yes, as somebody mentioned in the comments earlier, you have to actually manually download and install this. So basically, you'd have to download this from the internet and install it as you were installing a GNOME extension manually. Now what? What gives you this? Well, there really aren't any examples yet, but what can happen is somebody could take this virus, build up this beautiful SEO page, land at the top of the search engine for something like, you know, maybe like um, ticker news feed in your gnome and add a simple program that's already open source and out there that will, you know, that will legitimately you install it. And it will legitimately give you a, a ticker news feed for a variety of news feeds you did across there. But what would happen is involved in this is it would also install its payload. So you manually install it and it installs itself. So what it does is it, it installs, uh, like I said, there's a key logger that's not yet built. There is a capture screen that is going to take your a picture of your desktop. Now this is uh, this is run on an Xorg module, so if it, you're working on Wayland, it probably would not that fun function probably would not work. Uh, but again, I don't know all of the ins and outs of the application. These are just the things that it has. It also has the ability to turn on and record any sound from your microphones. It has the ability to grab any file off your computer. It's basically an entire spy uh, spy section, and it will take all of this data, the recordings, the screenshots the files, whatever else, and it will up, up, upload themselves to its server. So it's a giant spyware kit. Now this group tends to target specific profiles, so it's likely something that uh, it, it'd be a little bit more rare for your average user. It's not like when you're doing viruses, you might target a specific system or you might be going for the broad all of the world. So like Stuxnet targeted a specific facility. So that thing would go, it would worm itself around the whole world until it found that one facility it was looking for and then it would execute its payload. This doesn't specifically worm itself around. It seems to be targetedly installed on certain active targets. That seems to be what it's doing. But it could get out there and collect a lot of other potentially useful data as well. They could harvest things like credit card numbers. They could harvest files. They could harvest password lists on your computer. Grab this information and just you know, hey, that's a you know twenty bucks on the black you know on on you know up there on the black market. You could you know they they could profit themselves a little bit off of this from uh, unsuspecting people who get the thing installed.
So what it does is there are four files inside the directory. GNOME shell exe, GNOME shell ex, uh, ext dot sh8. I said exe, didn't I? Bad Windows user, bad old Windows user. No. <laughs> uh, GNOME shell ext, GNOME shell ext dot sh, uh, rtp dot dat, and setup dot sh. So what it does is it installs itself in this directory. So effectively, you're going to look for any of these files inside of this directory. .cache, which is a hidden file, so you're going to have to show hidden files. .cache forward slash gnome software, gnome dash software forward slash gnome dash shell dash extensions. So it will go inside of there, which is where gnome extensions install themselves, and then it will run the sh. Uh, so it, it does a few things. One of these is it, it will run a cron job ex executing this. So if you know how to check your cron tab. <clears throat> so cron is a system to do automated tasks. I use a cron tab here on my NAS where I have a Calibri book library server that I can sync ebooks to on my, on my uh, internal network. And every 10 minutes, I have a cron job that checks a new folder and if I just picked up or, or have a new ebook, I drop it in a specific folder, and then the cron job checks if there's a new file, and if there's a file, it takes the file, it adds it to the Calibri library, and then it de deletes the file from the to add list. And uh, that way, every 10 minutes, I have a cron job doing that. Cron jobs are used a lot. Um, cron job is what's used in popularity contest um, and a few of the other uh, data collection systems that are that are known and documented and you know not malware in the Linux community but things that people can choose to install which will run a cron job every you know whatever set period of time collect its data and execute a script so a cron job is a way you can execute a script what this does is it sets up a script to run a cron job every minute all right, so the GNOME shell ext. So this launches a main uh, executable, and the main executable is going to install a payload. It also has the ability to go online and to download new software. So if there's an update, something else they want to install, you know, the keylogger's done. Hey, let's go and automatically install the keyloader, the keylogger now. Woohoo! So that's what the system is going to do. All right, so it's built in C++. Uh, of course, we still have a lot of the uh, a lot of the. Um, uh, let's see where we're at here. Software GNOME shell temp. Uh, we have a lot of the comments still inside the script, indicating that this probably was not yet meant to be released. Now, you can actually, if you suspect an individual file, there is a community edition analysis that integer here uses so you can actually come over here and upload a file to this and you can check for marks of this particular virus so if you are um, questioning that you can do that all right now uh, this one from naked security by sophos this one actually talks a little bit more about it now that's a scary gnome right there that thing's creepy all right so they kind of go through a lot of the basics that um, uh, that the the primary researchers discovered and uh, they go through here some of the what some of the files are doing. And I believe if I uh, if I believe that uh, I think I included this because we were expecting. Uh, let's see. They think I they have a few uh, a few tips on getting rid of this. So um, we haven't seen it in the wild, so you will probably not uh, encounter it. But here's some tips anyway. Number one, check for gnome dash shell dash ext. If it is found, use kill-9 to terminate it. So checking your, your processes on your system monitor. So HTOP or uh, any system resources, most Linux distributions are going to have a GUI system resource monitor. Look for gnome-shell-ext. Check your cron tab. So you want to check your cron tab, which is, um, uh, I forget exactly where the cron tab is now. Um, but you can check your cron tab file. Just look up how to check your cron jobs. If you see this particular line, 0 59 dot dot, you know, star, 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 slash, cache, gnome software, gnome shell extensions, etc., um, then you can actually um, uh, you can actually remove that from your cron tab. And then look for any of the files that we mentioned, those four files. 
So you can actually remove the files manually as far as we know. There will probably be more information coming out about this. Now, how do you get it? Like I said, there's really no place in the wild this is yet seen, but you'd get it by manually downloading a, an extension. And unless you go in, open it up and audit the code and know what you're looking for, you could be installing anything. So if you're going to be installing shell extensions, please install them only from official sources. So extensions.gnome.org, this is the official place where you can actually come in here. You can download and manually install these or just install the browser extension for Firefox or Chrome uh, or Chromium whatever you're using. And this will allow you to manage your extensions directly from here in a very safe. This is like using the Linux repositories. This is very safe. Now, could somebody sneak something in? Yes, but they're going to have a whole lot harder time sneaking something in here than just downloading something off of the web. So be using this. The other place is gnome-look.org is a great place to find all sorts of things from mouse cursors to extensions. This one here is also generally considered as safe as well. There's a lot of people looking at this. There's a lot of audited code. I would always default first using the extensions.gnome.org first. You want to use this one first. Use the gnome-look secondly. So that is evil gnome. <laughs> what it is, how to get it, and how to get rid of it. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below.